What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Stationeers and uh, as we pan over here you can see I've been very busy since the last episode so I finally figured out I had to reload that save a few times but I did finally figure out how to grow potatoes. You can see here we've got 28 extra potatoes now and it was exactly what you guys said in the comments. The comments always saves me. I really appreciate that. And you guys said, you know, you got to leave the tanks of compressed gas outside in space for a while so that they can cool down. And then once they're cold, you can bring them into the room. And that's exactly what you need. Today, we're going to go out. We're going to get some uh, resources first. So the first thing we need to do, we want to get some fuel, some oxide and some ice. Uh, because as you can see, I have done a fair amount of the base. I've been working on expanding it. Eventually, I do want to pressurize this whole area here, expand this up to be too high and uh, one high over there. You can see we've got solar panels there, which are automatically tracking the sun now, which is fantastic. And uh, three solar panels, which are charging this super battery, which then, you know, powers the whole base. And we needed to do that because we have a dedicated air conditioning unit in there so we don't blow up the actual air conditioner. I've been really, really busy because I kept sitting there and going, you know what, I kind of suck at this game. And uh, I really didn't want to keep going through episodes with just fail after fail. So I wanted to actually sort of start to start to get somewhere and i did do a lot of resource collecting mostly just iron and stuff nothing too fancy but uh you know we've got this crazy setup now we've got a furnace that goes into a filtering unit so we can break down into oxygen water and carbon dioxide we've got this extra area over here we've got some lights there's the solar panel tracking circuit so we're gonna take a look at all that and uh and then of course we're gonna actually grow some plants this is uh there's currently no atmosphere in there for some reason i i accidentally boiled the plants at 100 degrees the sun does heat up the air inside the glass during the day so eventually what i want to do i got to move the electric furnace um and all the crafting stations i want to get rid of them uh, we also eventually need to stop using the electric furnace the problem is the electric furnace vents all the gas into the room around it and uh, the the whole furnace setup we have going on right now vents its excess gas outside of the base so eventually we need to get away from the electric furnace because otherwise we're just going to keep polluting the atmosphere of the base there's some weird oh that's a hole through the whole moon okay uh so we're looking for red fuel we're looking for oxide and we're looking for ice so here's some ice we're gonna grab that is there any more ice here is that it just one piece five ice uh ice okay more ice good so we need some ice this uh ice produces water oxygen and hydrogen go get some oxide over here oxide produces a lot of oxygen which is good uh, again, we put this all in the in the furnace at the same time. It's kind of nice, and uh, it works out really well just because the furnace then allows us to produce all these different gases, and then the filtration system on the exhaust takes all the gases. Now, we do have to watch out for the pressure. I have uh, blown up the pipes many times. Eventually, we got to finish the whole base and atmosphere the whole base and uh and then you know have a whole system of filters set up right now all the air you produce in the furnace kind of produces pollutant with it and uh and i haven't been able to make a furnace yet that filters the pollutant out so if we try and use it that's copper we'll save that for later we're not gonna have room for that that's a little bit of iron we'll gather a little bit of that and uh, we'll leave this one exposed just so if i'm exploring i can tell there's more of an iron vein there all right, we need red stuff, hydrocarbon stuff. It's uh, volatiles. There we go. We need this stuff. So we take the volatiles, and uh, there's lots more over there. That's good. So we'll grab all this. And this stuff produces your fuel. Uh, it also produces a lot of carbon dioxide when it burns. We don't have a fuel filter yet. We need a fuel filter off the furnace, too, to start collecting fuel. Right now, I just take a bunch of this volatile ice, dump it into the furnace, and burn it. But uh, really, we need to eventually have a system with a tank and mix the volatiles with oxygen at the right ratios and uh, produce stuff. But we've got full belt of materials, so we're just going to head back to the base there. We're going to take a look at uh, some of the systems first. We're going to light up the furnace. It's nighttime, but, you know, I found now that I do have a food supply and tons of power. It doesn't really matter. You see, we've got that battery. we got lights at night. Not all the lights yet. We need some lights on this side. Eventually, we'll put, like, an office up there or something. But uh, we're doing a lot better now. I've, I I did spend a few hours playing this game and really just uh, figuring out stuff. So we need to get rid of this furnace completely. It just puts all its gas out into the environment, which sucks. Um, for now, we can keep using it. Although, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll smelt this iron in the actual furnace because it, it's just instant. It's a lot faster to smelt stuff in the furnace. Um, we've got battery cells. They're pretty much always full, which is fantastic. They just Power. feed off of those and with the solar panel tracking automatically tracking the sun we get maximum power out of those three solar panels i figured out 
and and I actually was just looking through some of the kits when I was trying to figure out how to build an air conditioner, but there's an air conditioner and there's a filtration unit and they both fall into the atmospheric kit. And so when you take these filters, what we've got here is we've got the exhaust gas from the furnace, which goes in through this valve, which we're gonna turn on once we light the furnace up. And that feeds this pipe line here, which goes all the way across and then goes to this valve and then goes out into space. So as long as this valve is closed here, we're not gonna vent any of the excess gas into space. Each of these filter units is connected up to the power through this power line. They're not connected into any of the data ports yet, so they don't do anything automatically. Uh, but we've got all of them on, and in each one we've got an oxygen filter here, we've got a water filter here, and we've got a carbon dioxide filter here. And what the filter unit does is it takes gas through the input here, uh, filters out whatever you want, so it puts only carbon dioxide out into this line. And actually, if we go and grab our console, we can see that this pipe is only carbon... Really? There's some O2 in that pipe too? Was there O2? There must have been O2 in this tank when we hooked it up. But anyways, this carbon dioxide, you can see almost 100%. Uh, O2, 100% in that pipe, and water, 100% in that pipe. And then so we can have three tanks connected up, and at the same time when we burn one thing, we can produce all three. So we've got 25 degree water in here, which is great. We can use this to grow plants. We've got uh, very little oxygen, 162 uh, pascals of pressure, but you know, zero degree oxygen and uh, 200 degree carbon dioxide because the carbon dioxide is most of the hot exhaust gas. Let's put in our iron first because we're going to need that. Uh, and then we'll put in a bunch of ice. I don't know if I want to put in all the ice. We'll just put in one stack of each for now. Um, okay, we'll put in the oxide, which coincidentally, if you have oxide ice or volatile ice in your hands at night, you're fine. But if you have it out during the day, it'll start melting in your hands, which is a real pain in the butt because you start losing it. So you really want to do your furnace smelting at night. Uh, I think once we have this base sealed up, it's actually going to melt no matter what because we'll have the base warmed up to like 20 degrees or whatever, um, or 30 degrees probably. Uh, but regardless, we got our furnace pressure, so uh, that thing's good to go. We can light it on fire and it'll burn like crazy. So now we're we're opening, we're venting the gas out. Now we, we want to monitor this because if the pressure spikes too much, see the pressure in that pipe's already going up. The pressure in the exhaust pipe is three megapascals. If it gets to about twenty thousand, uh, or twenty, sorry, we want to uh, we want to stop at twenty thousand kilopascals. Uh, but anyways, so there we go. We just eject the furnace, and all that iron comes out instantly. Ten gram. Doesn't matter if it's ten, twenty, a hundred. You eject the furnace once, and it all comes out. So it's super convenient to use the furnace. And of course, we can collect the gases. So you can see there, we're producing mostly carbon dioxide, water, oxygen, uh, a little bit of nitrogen, and X is just sort of everything else. But X is also a pollutant. It kills you. Uh, 50 megapascals in the furnace, 14 out in the pipe. That's getting a little high, 4.5 in there. We are filling these tanks up, though. The temperature's going. Filling this one up, 72, 7200, yeah. What's this pipe? So we got to watch this valve, 16... And if this gets too high, we're going to bleed this pressure out. So eventually I want to hook this up to a pressure regulator and a sensor and have it when the sensor gets to a certain amount, it starts bleeding the pressure out. But uh, for now, we have to do it manually, which isn't a big deal. It'll it'll vent this really hot gas out. So that's getting really high up to 18. We're just going to bleed a little bit of that pressure down. There we go. It takes little to no time to bleed it all. You can see there just venting all that gas out. Exploding pipes are bad. Uh, and, and the reason why is, if you think about it, when all that air comes out of the pipe, the game is realistic. It will fling us across the base, and it will burn us with the 1,000 degree temperature in there. So it's really a problem. Uh, this tank's up at 10.6. It's probably going to be too much, to be perfectly honest. It, we need to let that tank cool. As it cools, the pressure will drop, uh, so it's not that big a deal. But uh, right now, yeah, this one's 7.2, that's fine, 22.5. I don't know what the pressure limit is in this tank, but you can see, like, way up. Yeah, you know what, we need to disconnect that. So we're just going to take this tank off. We'll, uh, we'll, let, we'll let this sit over here. So it's really, really high pressure gas, and that's the problem. Yeah, 714. So you can see it cools down right away. Again, great suggestion from the comments. You leave the tanks outside in space, or once we have this base completely filled up, we'll just have to bring it and leave it outside. But it cools down a lot quicker than if we had it still connected. Right, so as the sun comes up, you can see the panels are actually aimed towards the sun. And uh, they're automatically, if we if we can get up there, you know what, let's just turn on the jetpack. Here we go. If we get up here, you'll see if we, can you, can you even see, maybe from the side you can see it. Yeah, you can see very, very slowly 
they're adjusting their angle and it's actually going to be tilting itself to maintain 100% visibility. And I didn't really know how to do this. So I did look up, there was a few tutorials on the Steam Workshop that explain how to do this, but it's really a cool system. So on the one side of the solar panels here, we've got the power output and that just goes through this cable directly into the battery and uh, three panels just charges at like 400 watts each. They're fantastic. And on the other side, we've got the three data connections. Now they feed down into the base and then we've got this daylight sensor. Now the daylight sensor measures the angle of the sun relative to the sensor and it does it if the sensor is facing the sun, like you can see it is here, uh, that would be zero degrees when the sun is right on the horizon. And as the sun comes up, it measures that angle and the solar panels have adjustment points between zero and 100%. I don't know why they didn't do the solar panels with degrees, but they just did them between zero and 100%, where zero is like fully tilted the one way and 100% is fully tilted the other way. And so what we want is to actually read the measurements off the solar panels and determine, okay, if it's at zero degrees, we need the solar panel at 0%. And if it's at 180 degrees, we need the solar panel at 100%. So we've got a few different chips in this game to handle logic, and it does it a little bit differently than scrap mechanics. So our daylight sensor is just connected into our grid there. We've also got all these logic chips, which have multiple ports for data. That's why I've got sort of this weird mess of wires on the wall, but they've got, we've got a, a reader, a writer, a uh, math unit and a memory chip. And so the memory chip stores a value of 1.8 to represent the difference between 180 degrees and 100%. And the reader reads the angle of the light. So the angle of the solar panel there goes into this logic reader and it says, okay, 44 degrees, 45 degrees, so on and so forth. So that's the angle of the light. The math unit then takes the angle and divides it by 1.8 to convert it to a percentage, which then sends that over to the batch writer, which then says, you know what, I have this percentage, which is 26.5% right now, and it sends that signal to all the solar panels to adjust. So just by doing this, I was able to clue in, okay, we can do a lot of stuff. So for example, we have a pressure regulator feeding out to a batch reader, a logic reader, which then says, okay, the pressure regulator is this which then can go to a comparator, which compares it to a static value, which we can store in memory. And then that static value can come out and go to uh, all the different devices and say, you know what, increase the, the pressure regulator if our value is above this or so on and so forth and yada, yada, yada. So it really is allowing us to do all sorts of stuff. So I did look up a tutorial on how to do this. It was just sort of like a, a written tutorial and uh, very, very convenient, but I'm gonna start working on more logic in future episodes because I do wanna get into sort of automatic filtration systems, automatic air balancing systems, and not have everything so manual, but really just a cool system, and I'm really happy with the way this is set up. It's not really the same as scrap mechanic logic, but it's pretty similar, and of course, it does allow you to do some really cool stuff, so it's, it's a little more um, advanced than scrap mechanic logic, and I'm not saying advanced in that you can't do the same things, but scrap mechanic logic is direct binary whereas this is sort of you know this handles some pieces for you this handles other pieces of information for you you know you don't have to do all these massive circuits to add numbers together or compare numbers so it's kind of nice in that sense and it really is going to allow us to make all sorts of complicated things and there's a lot more logic pieces that i haven't even looked at yet these are just some of the basic ones um, but regardless where are we at with our, our giant tank of hot carbon dioxide 500 degrees that's not going to do anything that's way too warm okay what else do we got here What's the tank of oxygen? 400 degrees. Okay, you're also not going to help. What about you? 200 degrees. Okay, so basically, uh, we're going to have to wait until this cools down. Again, like I said, I've been really having a lot of fun with Stationers now that I understand how to actually play the game a little bit. And, you know, been reading a few things in the wiki, doing a lot more reading of systems, but then being able to try stuff out now that I'm not, you know, starving to death. And uh, being able to grow tons of plants has really been successful. It is terrifying to leave your plants in the greenhouse alone. Um, nothing's automatic. I eventually have to have this air conditioner automatically controlled, but right now it just doesn't do that. So, uh, yeah. But anyways, we've got an air conditioner, so we can turn it on. We can set our desired output temperature, but I've noticed even if you have the desired output temperature at 30 degrees, it still will cool it past that, and eventually it'll get so cold in the room that all your plants die. So I think we have to actually control that manually, but yeah, I, I don't really know. We can just like turn the power off to it with a sensor. Uh, but regardless, it's pretty simple, just like the filtration unit. We've got an input, we've got an output, we've got a waste. And uh, the input takes all the gas from the room, sucks it into this vent, which then goes into this pipe here, which then goes into the air conditioner. And it comes in at a hotter temperature, and then it gets cooled and comes out this pipe. Now, there's when, when you have an air conditioner in real life, 
the hot gas is put out through a different pipe. So if you look at your air conditioner that's in like a window, for example, uh, a window air conditioning unit, there's always hot air coming out the back of the air conditioner. It doesn't create cold, it removes heat. And so it has to send that heat somewhere. Now, of course, we're in space and we have a limited air supply in here. So we don't want to just vent our hot gas out into space because if we did that, it would, you know, waste gas constantly. And at the same time, we also don't want to vent our hot gas back into the room because then we're not really doing anything. We're just heating up the room. So what we do is our hot gas goes outside, goes outside of the wall, and it goes through a series of radiators and then comes back in and mixes with the output gas to get fed back into the room. So essentially we've created a cooling circuit and we can actually just fly over there and check that out. So this is our, our little cooling circuit. And you can see we've got our hot gas, which comes out here, goes along these radiators, goes through, and then goes back into the system. And they help cool it down so it goes back in at a pretty decent temperature. And generally speaking, between the two sides of the air conditioner, we get a bit of one degree differential. So it does cool down the room eventually. Uh, it just does take a while. So we're still going to wait here. This is still 468 degrees. It's stupid hot. But you can see there we are losing pressure. So we'll be back shortly to grow some plants and prove that we are the best space pirate people space station sur space survival space space people we're the best space people all right so the sun is coming back up and i've gone ahead and put the rest of the carbon dioxide gas into this room as well as i took some ice and just melted it directly in the furnace without actually burning it uh so the ice comes out at like you know zero degrees when it's melted and i put all that the oxygen that we got from that ice as well as well as some water into this room just to really help cool it down and so you can see if we pull out our handy dandy measuring device, we've got 50% carbon dioxide, which is really good for growing plants. Uh, you know, it's toxic to humans. We eventually want to regulate it around 5% for the entire greenhouse and keep it at that. But that 50% will go down as the plants grow. We've also got a little bit of water in the air, which isn't really a big deal. Temperature is still going down with our air conditioner. We're at 40.4 degrees. It's going to keep dropping there. You can see the differential across them, which is great. Uh, I want to bring it down to about 30 degrees and then we'll turn the air conditioning off. But we'll, we'll keep it running for now and uh, and the water there we've got for the plants. So the plants are 97% water in that pipe at 36 degrees. So that should all be good stuff. None of this should kill the plants and, uh, and we should be good to go. But I think on the furnace though, I definitely do want to set up some radiator loops outside. I mean, obviously you can just melt ice without actually burning it and you know, you can get the the gases at a colder temperature that way. But if we do it that way, we're also not going to be able to filter any gas from the from the system when it's running and when we're actually smelting ores. And I want to make sure we can get as much as possible because, you know, we're out in space and we don't want to waste any resources. So we just ate some potatoes there. We're going to plant these ones. Should be good to go. Look at that. Not wilted. Not at all. We've got the right temperature. We've got good enough pressure. So the pressure does have to be, I think, above 10 kPa. We've got water for the potatoes and they do have sunlight. So these should go pretty quickly and uh, by tomorrow we should have some fresh potatoes but you can see growing no problem each potato plant when it's fully grown produces three potatoes and uh, and you know you, you use one to grow it so it's not too bad we can keep the plants there of course and eventually we'll harvest them but in the meantime we have gotten to the point where we're actually growing stuff it's fantastic I, I just wanted to show you guys all the progress I've made on the base uh, been doing a lot of things and I think for next episode we're definitely going to move some stuff around I'll probably move those machines but definitely want to set up a better furnace system definitely want to be cooling those gases and uh, making sure we're collecting as much resources as possible but make sure you guys let me know what you think of this series in the comments down below of course hit that like button hit that subscribe button while you're at it we're not gonna we're not gonna wait for these potatoes to grow it is gonna be a couple days but uh in, in game days not real life days but it's, uh, it's good to know that we can produce, of course, tons of food, and we'll keep these ones growing a little bit longer. The problem I have right now is because we don't have any automatic filtration system, once the carbon dioxide gets to zero, we have to clear out all the plants and reintroduce a bunch of hot carbon dioxide and then cool down the whole room again. So that's a, a bit of a process and it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So we do have to definitely work on that. We'll work on that next episode. But of course, let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see y'all next time.